What's new? Yeah. Hmm. All right. The May 24th, 2021 meeting of the Yarmouth Old Kings Highway Historic District Committee is about to convene. As a precautionary measure to reduce the spread of the coronavirus, this meeting will be held by remote, remote participation. My name is Grace Rogers, and I'm the office administrator. I will be serving as moderator for this virtual meeting. I'm now turning it over to the committee chair. Good evening. My name is Richard Gaganwath, and I'm the chairman of the Old Kings Highway Historic District Committee for the town of Yarmouth. I will begin by taking a roll call to make sure we have a quorum. Bob Wilkins. I'm here. Rosemary Nichols. Here. Paula Morrison. Here. And John Stewart. Here. And myself, Richard Gagnard. So we certainly can uh, go on. Um, before we get into the meeting itself, I'll ask the moderator to go over the details of running the meeting in this COVID year. Grace, please. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 orders, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the Yarmouth Old Kings Highway Historic District Committee is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access and participate in the proceedings as provided for in the order. Persons who would like to view this meeting while do so in progress by jo joining this virtual meeting. You may also listen to the meeting by dialing into the number provided on the agenda. The meeting will also be posted on the Town of Yarmouth YouTube channel for future viewing. Please be patient as we work to overcome any and all technological challenges with the virtual meeting. For all meetings, all audience participants enter the virtual meeting muted. Participants will be unmuted when called upon to speak by the chair or moderator. If you are not speaking, please mute yourself to avoid unnecessary background noise. Clearly state your name each and every time prior to speaking. Do not use speakerphone or Bluetooth devices when speaking. All votes must be roll call votes. After a motion is made and seconded, the chair will ask for a roll call vote. For applicants and presenters, applicants can use the raise hand button or press star nine on their phone to identify themselves to the chair. The moderator will unmute applicants when they're called upon to speak during their portion of the agenda. Applicants shall identify themselves by first and last name and affiliation. Applications or presentations provided by the applicant will be displayed by the moderator only if asked to do so. If it appears the meeting cannot or should not proceed, then the moderator will recommend that the chair request to continue the hearing to a later date and time. Public comment. During the portions of the hearing designated for public comment, the chair will ask if anyone in the audience has any questions or comments relating to the item being heard. Members of the public may request to speak by selecting the raise hand button or star nine on their phone and waiting for the chair to call upon them to speak. Members of the public recognized by the chair are asked to identify themselves by first and last name and affiliation for the public record and then provide their comments. I will now hand the meeting back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. There are six new applications for certificates of appropriateness and one uh, which would have carried over from uh, two weeks ago. This evening, I just want to say a few things in terms of uh, conducting our part of the meeting. Please be reminded that our committee's main purpose is to review items for appropriateness and setting. And it's the responsibility of the applicant to comply with the regulations of other town boards and departments, including building, conservation, engineering, health, zoning, and the sign inspector. You should also know that there is a 10 calendar day appeal period starting once a decision is filed with the town clerk. Any person aggrieved by our decision tonight can appeal to the Regional Commission of the Old Kings Highway. And our office administrator will be happy to answer any questions with respect to that process. So we can begin with this first item on the agenda, which is concerned with replacing a garage door at 14 Homestead Lane. David and Linda Richards are the owners 
that gave garage door is the agent. I'm not sure who is here tonight to represent it. If anyone is here to represent this application, could you please, please raise your hand? Yeah, we have 13 participants on hand. I don't see anyone raising their hand to represent this application. I'll move the table of the application until the end of the meeting. I'll second. Oh. <clears throat> All in favor of tabling this to the end of the meeting? Rosemary Nichols? Aye. Paul Morrison? Aye. John Stewart? Aye. Bob Wilkins? Aye. And myself? Aye. So we will move on to the next item. <clears throat> this is concerned with installing a fence and automatic gates at 37 Union Street. The homeowner is Laura Mendoza. So we have two Laura's here. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, we can put some uh, information up. This is this is in terms of a stockade fence, and um, the color is oak. So if we, look at the, this, this is a mixed up layer. This is not very useful because it's upside down and backwards and it's, so let's skip that. Can we go further down? Here we go. This is an aerial view, which is not too terrific. I'm, I'm gonna show some pictures here. And my printer wasn't working very well. So you have to bear with me. This is the scene from the road at the very bottom of the picture. And as you can see, there's three houses clustered together. Yep. And they are, are fairly nice houses. They were built uh, about 10 years ago. 2006. Hmm? 2006. 2006, okay. And my wife actually was on the committee at that time. So I looked it up today. And, um, and they complement each other, uh, each a little different style. And so it was a nice grouping. And it has a big uh, expanse of lawn in the front, which I always thought would be used for croquet or something. <laughs> and um, if you look at the view from the top now, this shows all of the houses. And as you can see, come up over here is the driveway coming in. And then it splits off to each of the houses. And to one in the back. And as you can see, there's, um, oh, I have it. I see. I, this is not more useful in this way because this is the, the driveway coming across 
and the center house has a pool in the back. And um, but they're close, close together. The acreage is 0.2 acres, 0.23, and 0.24. And so the um, then Union Street is on the bottom and their house is, or the red dot is 37. Yep. And um, the, the lines representing the side lines are fairly close to the house in all cases because they are narrow. Uh, lots. So the, the first house is a uh, very nice uh, kind of Greek revival, white one, and uh, 37 is, is very nice, a little porch on the front. And as you can see in this picture, there are fences already. There's, there's a fence over here, mm -hmm. fence over here, the stockade fences. The house in the center, even when this picture was taken, had a lot of clutter in the front of it. Mm -hmm. Now a swimming pool in the back, uh -huh. and a uh, basketball hoop in the front. So obviously there have been a few children living there. Um, so the idea now is to put a fence someplace. The location of the fence, the extent of it has not been indicated. Um, can I raise my hand or? Yeah. And say, um, I would like it to come from that picture that you're looking at there with the, the fence that's already existing between yeah. my, my property and 41 next to me and right. just have it go right down the property line, right down to the road with a nice staircase um, fence down the bottom and then there'd be a gated entryway into the parking area that's designated for my property. Yeah. It will cut off my neighbor next door, um, this house here, and also protect me from the vicious pit bull that he has living there that has been reported over 12 times on the Yarmouth police recorded line that it has attacked myself, my son, and now my tenant. So I need a fence up for security reasons. I fear that the dog is gonna attack my tenants or her children. I'm pregnant and I have to go over there and do work and things and the dog is constantly out. I've talked to the to, um, natural resources as well as the dog control people for a while now, since 2017, it's been documented. Um, and the only option I've gotten to is to put this fence up and eventually I would like a driveway going in its own area down there. However, unfortunately I've, I've asked five different people for a quote or something on that and I have not received anything back at, at this point. So I, I would like to put the fence up with a gate and then possibly down the future there would be a separate and it, its own driveway. Yeah, you might have to check and see what the road frontage is. I had thought when this complex was built that the fact that the lots are narrow didn't give enough frontage on the road. Um, it's that. actually, it's, on a, it's actually a lot wa wider than you think it is when you're looking at your photos and it versus you actually standing in there, there's plenty of room for a driveway either to the right or to the left of that property coming up. Cause when you go straight down to the street, that front yard is actually really nice. It goes right to the edge of those bushes actually where the for sale sign is located. Yeah. Um, oh. This is an older picture because this is when the lawn was mowed. <sighs> yeah. 
So you already have a black um, chain link fence on each side of that house uh, standing back. Uh, so that's that's not sufficient, obviously. No, that doesn't even, that is just for the backyard. The problem is, is the front yard, as you come up that long shared driveway, which is my main concern is the driveway. I, I would, this driveway corrodes in the summer. If it rains, if it, anything, you can see the rot coming down. It goes into the road. Um, I've personally out of pocket paid for this. Those people that live in those houses up there did not contribute to any of the repair of that driveway, yet we all share that driveway as common grounds. Come summertime, living there in that property, that that front area is supposed to be community ground where everybody mows their lawn. But what happens is, is the, the person next to me only mows his little section. And then it looks like a Mohawk driving down historical district area. And it, and it, it really just doesn't look nice at all. And I, I think that it'll really make the property line a lot nicer to have a nice straight fence going down with its own entryway. Um, both of the, actually all the people that I talked to about the drive through said it was definitely a possibility. Um, the septic can withhold it. It is a, it is the right tank that needs to be underneath there and it's in the right location. Um, I just haven't gotten any responses back, um, but I was waiting for um, you guys for the fence because I needed permission to put a fence in. And I thought yeah. it would be better for us to have a paved driveway that doesn't recede into the road and have a, a lawn in the front with a fence going down to the street. I think well, well, I tell you right away, I've been on this committee for 25 years and we have never, ever permitted a fence that you're talking about. We don't like fences at all in front of the house, from the front line of the house Sometimes. It's not in front of the house. It would be the it would be the I, um, property line going down to the road. I understand, and all of that is going to be in the front of the house, between the front of the very front of your house and the street is no man's land, as far as we're concerned, with respect to fences. The only thing that would be is. People put up like a split rail fence, maybe 20 feet or 30 feet from the front of the house, and they put roses climbing on it, something like that, or a small picket fence, but not a six foot stockade fence. No way. Can you just, is this, uh, so you want to put the fence down to Union Street, but you won't have a driveway then? Because this no, is, this is may, may I finish? I have the floor. These houses were allowed to be built so close to each other, and this land was divided this way because it's, uh, it's a cluster development. Right. And share a common driveway. You can't have your own driveway. You don't own that property. Right. Okay, so, so you put a fence down to the road because you won't have access to your property. Well, I would that's have access not up to us. That's up to the building department. Um, you, you'd have to seek relief from them. So uh, we can't allow a fence to be built like that. Well, like, there would be a separate, there would be a gate going into the, there would be an automatic. That's not the point. The point, when I read the thing at the beginning, I said that our job is to look at the appropriateness of what is asked for and the setting. And the setting of having a stockade fence coming forward all the way to Union is not very tasteful. Well, the people next door have that. Right next door on the left of me have a stockade fence starting from the very back of my property going all the way down to the road. Absolutely do. I can do So it. how can they have the same fence? This is- We have uh, in 25 years when it's been. Where is that? Oh. I don't, you don't see it in that map, but if you look to the to the side of my house, that stockade fence goes right down to the road. You can see it. I it's the other side of my property. The address, the address of that house. Yeah, right there. What is the address of the house? Um, it's in the diagram that I gave you with the picture that I drew. It's 33. That's outside the cluster. You can see it right there. It doesn't make it, it makes no difference. It's outside the cluster. It's in back of the house. 
It's in back of their house. It's not in front of their house. It goes all the way down to the pro it's my property line of that of that house. But it's it does the front of their house is on that side street going in. Uh, can I ask a question regarding your specific it's on Spinnaker Lane, isn't with it? With regard to the pit bull. Yes. So your tenant. Your tenant lives in the middle house. I want to be clear on this. No, absolutely not. My, my house is 37 Union Street, and my tenant lives there with her two children. The man in the middle with the with the basketball hoop has the dog now, and he has had over seven dogs that the dog officer can attest to. So you're not <laughs> you're not living in the house. I had to move out because I'm not living in fear for my life. I couldn't go to work. I had to leave work every day to get my kid off the bus because the dog's attacking my kids. Yeah, well, that's a problem. And <laughs> I, I don't think this committee wishes to come across as being unsympathetic to the problem, but it's not a problem that we are able to address. Um, we, we simply address um, matters of aesthetics, uh, appropriateness and setting. And um, the, the fence as you propose it, even if it could, would be allowed, I don't know about the setback um, from the road, but um, it, it just, it's, we're not able to accept that. It's just not something that we could, uh, that we could uh, in all good conscience endorse. So uh, I don't know how you're gonna. I don't know how you're gonna deal with your problem with the. With the I, I don't think even, the even, if, even if we were to allow it, it, it the, the building panel wouldn't allow it. It, it can't be done. Why? If the, clusters, if the houses, those three houses are on one lot. You're a cluster zone. The reason they were allowed to be built so close together on such a small piece of land was because they share a common driveway. Everyone would have their own driveway, but it's what? not that's not legally possible. It's not a, that is not our call. That's up to the building department. I think you should talk to the building department about that. So I can ask the building department if I can have a, a, a another you driveway. Have your own driveway, have your separate driveway. It's not up to us. But then even if it was up to you, like we were just discussing the fence. If I can put the driveway in without the fence, that still doesn't fix the problem of this I'm dog sorry. and constantly being harassed. I, 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 the dog, I don't Even know if you that this. hasn't been um, addressed, but we can't, that's not, it has nothing to do with what we do, the dog problem. Well, that, I mean, the dog officers told me that I had to, to put up protection to protect my home. I think so. <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid we can't help you with that. I don't think we can legally do it. So my only I, option is to contact the Board of Health, you said, and the Board of Health? Building department. The building department and ask them to see if I can put in a driveway. Right. Which would still be, I'd have to then come back and ask again for the fence, but then- It would be yeah. the Board of Appeals. It would be probably sent to the Board of Appeals. Grace has this. Grace has her hand up. Okay. You, you would have to talk to, correct. You would, yes, you would have to talk to building to start to talk to zoning because it is a shared drive. There would also be genuine concern about um, most likely than not the fire department. And if it's a shared drive, access for a fire truck or, or an ambulance. So I think that perhaps going back to building to talk to zoning um, would be the best bet to go just because it is zoned as a common drive. Yeah. Yeah, you'd, be, I, 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 you'd be forcing the house um, to the north to, um, you'd be blocking their, their access to their house over emergency vehicles. Good yeah, point. Oh. I, I, I wouldn't be overly optimistic that you're going to meet with approval. Um, it, there's a, there are a myriad of problems with this application and, um, and our objections are just one of them. So this is a tough, this is a tough one. I'm, I'm sorry about the pit bull. But, uh, you know, uh, that's all I can say. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I do. Mm. I don't know. Uh, sorry, I think the fellow this is the, this is the situation. Support events up around the pit where he should have a fenced in area where the pit bulls are not loose. Right. 
Yeah. It shouldn't be loose anyway. There's a leash law. The leash law right now. He doesn't listen to that. Uh, well, well, um, well, there's a couple of things that I, I'm thinking of here. You mentioned that fence next to you that goes all the way down to the street, uh, probably because that person owns that property and has a right to put the fence all the way down to the street. Well, you don't own the, you don't well, own the property in front. The address of that house is not Union. There's a side road that goes up, and that's the back of the other house where the fence is. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is that fence that you're looking at, I mean, I live next door to a pit bull, and I had up a um, four-foot, um, not stockade, uh, picket fence, and that kept that dog out. The, the fence you're looking at looks like it belongs in a fortress. Right. It's the actual, not the actual fence. It's just a picture of it. I didn't, I thought I just needed to show you what the fence. Well, we know it's what not that actual fence in the picture. It's just well, a regular we, stockade fence, plain, well, that, like the that's one that's in the- looks like a fort. That's what they had at Fort Apache. So I'm, so I'm confused. So my property, even though I purchased this home, my property line goes down to the road with two lines on each side going down to Union Street, but I don't own that front section anymore because the neighbors own a section of my lawn. I'm confused on how this works. No, we're not sure. It, it, it's it's laid out with property lines. If you look in the, the assessors, it spells out the acreage you get taxed on that acreage. Um, nevertheless, the fact that it has this common driveway and the whole layout has to be approved when they do that by the fire department. The, <laughs> the crews. And uh, it's treated, you know, as a group of houses in lots of ways. Tax-wise, it's cut off. Um, don't know if you if you have enough frontage. Frontage needs to be typically about a hundred feet, and uh, if you don't, you can't put a driveway there. A like, driveway is. See you, John. A driveway. A driveway is fifty feet, Richard. Fifty feet. A hundred. It's a hundred and either a hundred or hundred and twenty for uh, a road cut. So, um, it, but that, that, that's not relevant here because of the fact that the, the houses were allowed to be built as a cluster. Yeah. Um, okay, so also my house is the last house on that unit. So if you're looking, you're coming up that shared driveway and you go all the way to the right. Yeah. Um, mine is the very last house. So yes. I'm asking for permission to cut myself off from this group of people that don't anyone no one does anything with that whole driveway ever i can't sell the house because the people next door look like they have a daycare and a bunch of dogs running around i can barely rent it now because now the dog's attacking my tenants so we, I don't have to we, we just don't have that authority sorry. the only thing i could see is if if you this is nuts. have your where your gate is proposed if you come forward towards Union with like one more section of six foot, taper it down to four foot, then make a right turn across your property with a, a four foot, which maybe is a scallop top or something. So you want to turn? Like, I wasn't going to even turn it. I just wanted it to go straight down. I know, I know, I know. But that's I'm, pro yeah, yeah. I'm proposing something to you that we might agree to. And so I'm telling you it, and you can go home and sleep on it and see if it's at all good for you. Yeah. But there'd be no way we'd give a six foot across, and especially to come all the way down to Union. Even if it could be allowed by um, other town agencies, which it probably won't be. So I move to deny the application. I'll um, second. Okay, so proposed and denied. So all those in favor, uh, Rosemary Nichols. Governor, 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 governor.
So I, I can't, so that's it? Charge. Ask them who's in charge. Why? <laughs> Sorry. I'm confused. Ask them who is in Paul charge. Martin. Aye. Bob Wilkins. Aye. Myself, Richard Gagenworth. Aye. So. John Stewart. Aye. Yeah. So, Laura, so, you're going to have to go through a couple of other boards uh, to get things squared away. And if you get anything squared away, then you can come back and talk about a more appropriate fence to put up. If so you, get, you, an op if you, you get an could, okay. That's a good, Paul makes a good point. You can come uh, ask us uh, for advice. You don't have without it, you don't have to put an application and you can ask for an informational meeting and um, We'll see if we can help you figure something out. Does that sound like your plan? Do you want to? I'd be I'd be parked down at the police station every day if if these neighbors were doing that to me. Yeah, I think there are other town agencies that you should speak to before you come back to us. I agree. All right. Thank you. All right. Sorry. Yeah, we are sorry. Sorry. This is fucking horrible. The next item is concerned with painting a house. The shingles trim doors at 6 Squirrel Run Street. Linda Partland is the owner and Peter Kelly is the agent. Is Peter here or Linda? Hello, one second, Richard. I have to organize some of these applications. Okay, we have Linda. There she is. Linda. Linda has to unmute herself or we have to unmute her. There you go. You can mute Laura. Good. So, Linda, you're talking in terms of uh, Englewood Cliffs Gray and Boston Brick. Do we have a picture of the house? Yes. Yeah, this got squiggled. Um, the colors are written oh. down and there's some swatches on the right. Here we go. Ah, there we are. So I take the siding would be the dark gray? No, the siding is the, sil the light color, silver mist. Oh, there's three colors here. The, yes. one up, oh, right. the one up above yeah. didn't show up when I was studying these. It just barely shows up, right. I see. Yeah. That's, that's uh, mist gray. I've... Mist gray, silver, well, I, I, silver I, I, mist. I use that color on a lot of boats. <laughs> on the deck. Called mist, but yeah, no, it's, a, it's a lovely, it's very attractive color. It is. Okay, that would be the siding. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what is going to be the darker gray? That's just the trim around the windows. Oh. Okay. And then the one one in the garage door would be that color, and the front door would be the brick. The brick, yeah. Uh, okay. Do we have elevations of the house? Photographs? It's it's a ranch house with the uh, garage on the right. Yeah. 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 Okay, so yeah, that's not too much of a change. No. no. It's and, very little change. And mm -hmm. the uh, 
are they black shutters? I'm not going to put the shutters back up. Uh, hmm. But the, the trim would be white. The trim will be the gray around the like where the garage door is in the windows. Dark gray. Yeah. What's the name of that color? It's Englewood Cliffs. Uh, Englewood Cliffs. Okay. Mm. A Jersey color, huh? I'm sorry? A New Jersey color? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, there are the cliffs uh, showing okay. up on the Hudson River. <laughs> color of the water at Englewood Beach. For the matter. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> We have a lot of New Jersey people here on the Cape. <laughs> and it's a beautiful color. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it too. I move to approve the application. I second. Okay. All those in favor? Who's Mary Nichols? Aye. John Stewart? Aye. Paula Morrison? Aye. And Bob Wilkins? Aye. And myself will abstain. <laughs> Good. Okay, so Linda, you'll be able to start painting soon. You should wait 10 days in case there's an appeal from one of your neighbors. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> just, you know, you could be doing lots of painting and suddenly we get a an appeal and then it has to go to the commission and it all takes time. But so. it's, it's unlikely to happen, but it would be prudent mm -hmm. to wait anyway. Right. All right, I will. Just to, to save you the money and the time, so. <laughs> Good. Okay. okay. You. The next item now would be uh, installation of a road sign and a building sign at 939 Route 6A. Ali Lemieux is the owner of Simple Signs, the agent. Hi guys, this is Charlie from Simple Signs. Good. Good. Um, I did, I, my Zoom meeting just reloaded and now I guess I'm not up there. I don't see myself. Can you hear me? Oh, we, we hear you. Yeah. Fine. Okay. We can hear you and it says Charlie. Okay, perfect. Um, Ritual is a little store that went in up on Route 6A and they're in a small business center. Right. Looking to put up a new carved sign on the building and a tenant sign out on the existing road sign, just that there's a space for them to put their own. Yeah, there's like ladders. Yeah. Correct. The, what's existing is what you're looking at right there on the screen. What they're proposing is image number seven, which is to put a... Over the windows. That sign would be 24 inches tall and 120 inches long, which will fit the Yarmouth sign code. Is that not already up? That is not already up, no. That's 20 Seems to me I drove feet. by that today. No, we didn't put us, we didn't make the sign yet. We didn't make it until it's approved because if we make it and you don't approve it. <laughs> that was a good yes. move. Um, was, but I, don't I didn't. Larger than. Something is there already that says ritual because I drove by it today and there is that and some other sign that maybe it's the mailbox. I don't know, but. Yeah, but this is two, two, it's 20 square feet. You said 10, 10 feet wide, two foot tall. And Correct. we wouldn't allow that. No, that's huge. 20 is huge. We allowed 12. Okay. So right. there you go. So we didn't make it. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good move. <laughs> good move. Uh, so what size does that turn it into if we scale it down in the same um, proportion? 
Um, we're probably gonna. It's probably gonna be eighteen inches by. Um, geez, eight, eight. Eight. It'll be eighteen inches by eight feet. Yeah. So foot and a half by eight feet. That'll be twelve square feet. Open each end. So, what? Uh, and how many square feet does that work out to? Since my train is not calculating wow. properly, one point five times. Okay, twelve. Yes. So that would bring that size down significantly. Good. Okay. And that is what, what you guys allow is 12 square feet? Right. Okay. Now on the ladder, that will be just a little uh, what, six inch by 24 or something. Right, six, it's six and an eighth by 26 and a half. So that's, that's just over a half a square foot. Yeah. And that, there's a whole bunch of them now. What is there, two or three signs? Yes, there's uh, there, there, there's five spaces in the building, and they'll take up one of them. Yeah. That's um, oh. picture eight, is it? Um, yes. Before do, just before that, so the ritual sign, if we if it's scaled back um, to eighteen by eight feet, uh, it's going to be proportionately about the same as what it what you're proposing now. So in other words, we can easily visualize what it's going to look like, yep. and we could theoretically approve the uh, amend the application to that to those uh, specs. Mentions. And approve it. Sure. Okay. Correct. Yep. We're going to um, just grab a corner of it and shrink it down to eighteen by eight, yep. and it's going to look exactly like it is now, just smaller. That, I'm just trying to confirm that. That was my sure. That was my yes. thought. Yeah. My my take on it, as it's shown here, is it's too big because okay. it, it uses all the space between the little roof and the upper window. And right. uh, it just overwhelms that location. So trimming it down, I think, is going to make it look better overall. So if we look at uh, picture eight, Okay, the way they're doing it is uh, it's one big section and each smaller sign. So you're going to be over here. Correct. Um, That's the one that we're going to be doing. Good. Is, is there a little decoration over to the left on that? Similar? No, there is no decorations on any of the road sign. We're, we're conforming to what they have out there already, which okay. is just a, a sans serif font. Um, and that that's it. We're we're not putting a logo out on the road. Yeah. Okay. Because the ritual takes up so little space. Um, right. We we wanted to keep the letter height the same as what everybody else has. Yeah. And uh, we could put a, a logo out there. We were just trying to conform to what was gonna what was existing there. Yeah. Even if you just put a bar on either side sort of lengthen it. <laughs> sure. It looks lonesome compared to the others. OK, we can do that. Not sure what you mean by that, Richard. Mm -hmm. Like a squiggly line on either side of the word. Yeah. But I'm like thinking a, not a squiggly. Oh, 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 I see. It's a straight line, even. Every, a everything straight else. Line. Yeah. Let's every, what, what, what would be your idea? <laughs> Blanking the rich, the word ritual. Myself? Off the top of your head. What would you put there? Oh, I wouldn't put anything. I think it stands out fantastic. But if you guys would like us to put a, <laughs> a straight line on either side, we can do that. Absolutely. I wouldn't put a squiggly line because not, it, mm. then everything else on that sign is has straight lines to it. Okay. Yep. All right. That's yeah. a clean and simple. Yes. All right. Yeah. I, I think that's the way to go. Clean and simple. Like right. the others. Right. Okay. Good. All right, so uh, making the adjustment to the dimensions of the large sign. Um, do we hear a motion on this? Yeah, I'll move to approve the application uh, with um, the amendments uh, referenced in the discussion, namely that the principal sign on the building be reduced to 18 inches high by eight feet long and proportionately placed within uh, between the low the roof the, the, the short roof 
and the windows above and that the ritual sign be flanked by straight lines on either side. Very good. Second? I'll second. I'm sorry. Rosemary, Rosemary has seconded it. Yep. So all those in favor? John Stewart? Aye. Rosemary Nichols? Aye. Paula Morrison? Aye. Robert Wilkins? Aye. And myself, Richard Kegenwath? Aye. So. Great, guys. Thank you so much. Good working with you, Charlie. All right. Have a great day. Bye bye. I know. <clears throat> okay. Next item is a shed, but it's a little bigger than usual shed. It's a 12 by 16 shed at 162 Center Street. Philip and Ashley Green are the owners, and Pine Harbor Wood Products is the agent. If anyone's here to represent the application, could you please raise your hand or press star nine if you're on your dials and phone? We still have 20, uh, 12 people on board. No one, Grace? It doesn't look like anyone here is for this application either. I'll move to table the application until the end of the meeting. I'll second. All those in favor? Rosemary Nichols? Aye. John Stewart? Aye. Paula Morrison? Aye. Robert Wilkins? Aye. And myself, Richard Gagenworth. So we will table it at this time and bring it up again later. So the Next item is concerned with a sign, another sign. It's at 555 Route 6A. It's a piece of property which is in conservancy with the Native Land Conservancy is the owner. So hopefully there's a representative. Ramona Peters. Yes, hello everyone. Good. My name's Ramona Peters. I'm the uh, president of the Native Land Conservancy. Great. So this is, uh, this has a very small frontage. Yes, it is, it's kind of small. And then it spreads out and back. Yeah, it shows up here at the top of picture. It's a narrow section coming in. Right. And is some of this partially wetland or something? Back further is the uh, Simpsons Bog, a former old bog. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so it, it does abut both uh, Union Street and 6A. We'd like to at least now put a sign out on that little section of 6A. It's, uh, it's about 50 feet wide, that opening. Uh -huh. okay. And that would be set back, what, 15 feet off the road or something? Correct. And it would look like this number six. Mm. Yes, that's the, uh, it stands approximately six feet high. It's a, it's a regular eight foot um, four by four that, you know, goes in the ground a couple of feet. And the uh, posts would be white? Correct. What's the diameter of the sign? Uh, it's a 16. 16. 16. Yeah, 16 inches. Mm -hmm. Oh, 16. I see it now. OK. Yeah. All right. Looks very nice. Yeah, my only, my only, I'm very much a less is more person. Um, and the cap on the top of the post seems to me um, busy, mm -hmm. unnecessarily. Yeah. Uh, I would eliminate that and raise the top edge of the, uh, of the sign itself to the top of the post and just have uh, 
the entire visual Im impact be the sign. Um, I think the sign is quite nice. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, right. I don't uh, think you need that cap. I, I, I think it would be better without it. Yeah, I'm not sure about the weathering. Like uh, yeah, I think, um, well, we do have this sign in different locations around the Cape and um, some off Cape as well. The same um, configuration. I don't know about, I could certainly have them, the sign maker change that. Um, but it would have to have some sort of cap so it doesn't weather and split. Oh, I understand. No, that, that I understand yeah. that. Right. Yeah, they, they, it can be sort of a, like a hip roof, yep. you know, with four sides coming to a point. And yeah, the they, bottom. Um, they is... grass pieces like that, don't they, John? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah, if you look at, I think the bottom is a picture of the sign itself in sandwich, maybe I thought I sent that. Yeah. Maybe it didn't get in. Yeah. Uh, there is a picture of um, what is on Katuit Road in Sandwich or in Centerville. There's one there too. They, um, Can I ask a question? The, uh, the bottom of the post also has a boxed, like a little decorative boxed in area. Uh, so it's not just a straight post. So it's matching, the top is matching the bottom? Yes, yes, it's yeah. sort of a, you know, just to make it look less of a lollipop, I guess, you know, sort of thing. Where, 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 where in relationship to the sign is the, uh, uh, oh, the inverted cap, for lack of a better word, where is that? How close to the ground or how close to the sign? It's right on the, it, it's right on the ground. And so, All right, don't so see there's it. There's a two foot piece that goes in the ground and then um, about a two foot little boxed in. Yeah, so that has very little visual impact. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think uh, I, I stand by my statement. I think it would look better without the cap, without that projecting elaborate cap on the top. Um, you could have a, you know, a very simple conforming cap that's no, not, uh, doesn't extend outside the perimeter of the post, and that would take care of your nicely. And it could be copper, or it it, it doesn't need. Yeah. It. But um, yeah. It, it, that would take care of your your elements concern. Yeah, probably better than this thing. Probably better. Yeah. And still not get the give you the lollipop look that you want to avoid. I yeah. think the peaked uh, brass cap would be. Yeah, you can paint them. Paint them white. Yeah, or it, yeah. Uh, what they sell is copper. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Good. That's nice to try. I move to approve. I'll second. Uh, do we want to? Mm -hmm. Do we want to put the amendment? Right. Do you want to? Yeah. Put the I, cap I just suggesting that the amendment be part of the, um, yep. the motion. Okay, well, I guess that's understood. And so, it was so. a cap. Yes, uh, yes. A, a three and a half inch cap of their choice of color. Right? Three of the four by four is three and a half inches square. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. okay. So it was seconded? Yes. Okay, Rosemary seconded. All those in favor? Paul Morrison? Aye. Paul Wilkins? Aye. Rosemary Nichols? Aye. John Stewart? Aye. And myself, Richard Gaganworth? Aye. So, Ramona, thank you for coming in. Yes, thank you. I, Good night, everyone. I had a cousin, Ramona. If she was still alive, she'd probably be about 120. <laughs> Yeah, it's a beautiful sign. Yeah, I love Ramona's name. Very attractive. Good. Thank you for coming. So the next item will be, oh, first of all, we had tabled two items, the garage door at the beginning, and I don't know if they've shown up since. We can put a call, nobody's showing. It doesn't seem. 
to be true. Yeah, I don't think anybody came for either of these applications, unfortunately. Yeah, and the other was the Pine Harbor shed. Right. No one there. Okay, so we'll have to table them to the next. Well, we can put them off. We'll first untable item 21-A073, which is as a realty trust concerned with a temporary mobile trailer or whatever on the property at 223 Route 6A. I'll, I'll, move, to, I'll, move, I'll move to untable. I'll second. All those in favor on tabling? Rosemary Nichols. Aye. John Stewart. Aye. Paul Morrison. Aye. And Bob Wilkins. Aye. And myself, Richard Gagnonworth. Aye. So we have some new drawings here, I think. Oh. More than a drawing, it's a picture. Is this what it's going to be? It is. Good awesome. Evening. It's before. Thank you. you are we knew wow. you'd love it. You gave wow. us the recommendation. <laughs> you gave this us is... the recommendation. We found it. There you go. What about, what about all the electricity and, and the plumbing and all that? That'll be. Well, we can take care of it. Okay. Um, That's all we need we... to know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take care of it. We took care of this. And we painted it white. Oh, instead of gray, light gray. Yeah. Well, it's not gray, it's sandstone, and we knew that would be a no-no. Oh. So now it matches the restaurant. It depends. The inn. Uh, you, you, exactly. You, the right. inn is white, so you might as well make it white. Exactly. Oh, thank, you, thank you so much for the recommendation. We also so, just no. made a, a small, we made a small um, revision to where it is on the property as well, so it's not necessarily on the, on the um, dry uh, the parking lot. We're putting it caddy corner at the end of the patio garden. Can we show picture four? Yeah. So um, if you if you look where that blue dot is, yep, yep. That's, exactly mm -hmm. what it is. that's pretty much where we'd like it to be because that way we have access to a um, water drainage tank and we're going to run uh electric under the driveway mm -hmm. and awesome. yeah it you won't see a post a pillar anything but you'll see that beautiful little she shed <laughs> <laughs> she shed. Uh, it, could, it could be it an airbnb be in, in the off season yeah. <laughs> it may come with a chandelier, but we're not sure. <laughs> so where is the temporary one? We never bought it. It's we, we, canceled, we canceled the order after our last meeting oh. and got incredibly lucky because we found that unit and it will arrive hopefully June 21st. Great. Well, I think that's just wonderful and I will approve yeah. the application. I would <laughs> that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can't wait. Terrific. I'll see either. Do we have a motion on this? You already had it. Yes, I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so you and I seconded. It. Enthusiastic. Oh, yeah, you're faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. All those in favor of Rosemary Nichols? Uh, aye. <laughs> John Stewart? Aye. Paula Morrison? A resounding aye. And Bob Wilkins. I with gratitude. There you Mr. go. Higginworth, I agree wholeheartedly. Good. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. Thank you for the oh, suggestion. Thank you. And uh, thank you. You're welcome. Good. Good luck with it all. Appreciate it. We appreciate it very much. Oh, I, as, as do we. Very, okay. very nice. Cheers. We're going to celebrate with a glass of wine now. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good.
Okay, happy ending. Yeah. How uh, gorgeous is that? Uh, That's great. Uh, wow. So, um, we'll have to table the other two items for the next meeting. So, and, uh, do we did we one? untable them yet? No, I guess we'll no. have to untable it. <laughs> oh, you're right on. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of this. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right, can we deal with them one at a time then? Um, yeah, technically. All right, so I'll move to untable the first application, um, okay. whatever it was. I'll second. <laughs> was that the garage door? Yeah. All those in A075. That one. Yeah. yeah. John Stewart? I agree. Yes, I. Paul Morrison? I. Rosemary Nichols? I. And Robert Wilkins? I. And I will too. Richard Kagenwa. Right, now, now do we want to table that one again? Uh, yep. I'll move to table that application to the next meeting. And I'll second that. All those in favor of that? Rosemary? I. And Paula? Aye. And John. Aye. And Bob. Aye. And Richard. Aye. Now okay. we we'll move on to 162 Center Street. I'll move to untable the 162 Center Street application yeah. until the next, uh, to untable mm -hmm. that. Uh, wait a minute, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, un, we're untabling it. Untabling right. that one. 21-8078. Okay. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Rosemary Nichols? Aye. Paul Morrison? Aye. John Stewart? Aye. Robert Wilkins? Aye. And myself, Richard Gegenworth? Aye. Now I move to table that. <laughs> I second. All those in favor of tabling this for two weeks till our next meeting, which will be June 14th. Rosemary Nichols. Aye. Paul Morrison. Aye. John Stewart. Aye. And Bob Wilkins. Aye. And myself, Richard Kagenworth. Aye. Okay. The other item that had been written on our agenda originally was a misprint. So we don't have to deal with that at all. Um, <clears throat> Things have quieted down a little bit on the appeal scene. And um, so that's good. Uh, what else? Anything else new? What's going on with the house on the corner of um, Vespa? Is mm. that still an appeal? I think we're being ignored. Well, I hate that. The uh, fence. The, yeah. the fence and the, and the well, both fences. There are two fences that. Well, I think they're just uh, biding their time. See what happens. At what point do you draw the line in the sand? Well, maybe we could review the last correspondence with them, which I don't think that we ever received a reply? No, from either of them. Then they're in violation and... Um, right. Uh, at what point do they begin to be fined? Richard, we have to ask the uh, building department to initiate a fine? Yeah. After a 30-day period or... Yeah. What is the fine? Is the fine, um, $50 I mean, can they just blow off a fine if it's not no. enough? No. Yeah, but how much is it? What would the fine be? A maximum, isn't it, Grace? A maximum of $50 a day? A day? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Remember in the bulletin, I believe it's more than that. It's 100. I think it's 100. 
I think oh, it's really? discretion of the enforcement agent. I don't have the bullet. Oh, okay. I I think it's it's quite a few a few hundred actually. And it can be per day upon the discretion of the enforcement agent. Right. And wow. it's classified as a uh, misdemeanor. So you would have to if you don't pay it. Yeah. Right. This has dragged out a long time. This um maybe it's gone far enough. I think so. Yeah. So uh, our course of action would be what, Richard? Let's look at the uh, last correspondence on this. Uh, I'll go down to uh, town hall and visit with Grace, and um, we can look over the correspondence and maybe write a f another shake him up letter. In the meantime, if our members, committee members, will take a walk over there and uh, check it out again. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm over there all the time. It's in my right name. So maybe, yeah, the roses are growing up a lot. Okay. Uh, maybe, Grace, you could um, send us a copy uh, uh, to the what the initial application was. Yep. Do we have a number on that? Do we remember? That's all I can look back, but. I don't remember. Um, does, what, does anyone remember the, the number on Route 6A? What? House number? Yeah. Oh. You can find it, hold on, hold on. Yeah, if you can't find it, it's all right. I have it on Let me just, I'll just pull up Vespa Street. Yeah. Just, just so the committee knows, stated in the bulletin, that That's violators fine. of the Historic District Act. It's, uh, it's Route 6A number like 110 or something. Sorry, Grace, could you go ahead with what you were saying? Yep, um, in the bulletin under 404, section B, violators of the Historic District are guilty of a misdemeanor and may be fined for a minimum of 100 to a maximum of 500 with each day constituting a separate violation. The penalty of contempt is available for any violation of a judicial order issued by the local district court. Right. It's one. It's 110 Route 6A. One, one, Thank yeah. you. Oh, I'm sorry, 112, 112. 112. Okay, I can bring that up on a screen here. I can't share it with you though, it's... Um, That's right. Ah, uh, vinyl pen. That shows, that shows nothing, doesn't it? Right. right. <laughs> you have successfully shown us nothing. <laughs> but you did it really well. It yeah, I excel kidding. at this kind of thing. <laughs> I try to give it up and I try to it out the truth. It's clear as day to me. <laughs> well, it's insulation of a vinyl fence without approval from us. Yeah, from there, the there, that there are two fences that are in violation. There's so not, right, uh, what's the other one on? Which the other street? one. Is the other the one's street. down the side Ooh, street. Fence. 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 Which street is it? Fence. It's on the corner north. It's on the uh, north east corner Fence. of Six A and Vesper. The house. Oh. And, right. and the pool, um, the pool fence is back from the vinyl fence. Oh, you're just still talking about Six A. Yeah. Because you're talking about there's another fence um, uh, over um, towards uh, Union Street. Uh, oh, we heard that Lane. one. We went back and looked at it and it didn't look so bad. Yeah, we kind of let that, let that the, one slide. The new one, I, I sent uh, a picture, or two pictures, I think, on what is it, number one, Uncle Dan's or Uncle somebody. Uncle, Uncle Jimmy's way. Uncle Jimmy's way. They have a uh, four foot, very nice fence, but they put it up in front of the house. It goes right across the property and it hides one of those bouncing things, trampoline. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, it comes up the sideline of the property and across the front of the house. And it's a cedar board with a scallop top. 
It's a very nice looking fence, but it's in front of the house. And uh, it really changes the character and mood of the whole house because before they had a very nice lawn. And now they've enclosed it. And it's, um, it's like 10 feet away from the blacktop road. So I'll have to write up something on that. And um, you're gonna have to come into a meeting. But they, they uh, just put it up without any application at all. So we'll send them a letter? Yep. Okay. Could I ask a procedural question? Or should I, I wait? <laughs> no. you should I wait? No, so just... if, if you don't um, go after somebody who's who's gotten a violation of something it, within a certain time, do you lose that ability to do that if you've waited too long? Or can you just write up anybody at any time? Well. Like say about, somebody's had a fence up for three years. Can you go up and say, sorry, the fence is no good? If it's and not in compliance. After three if, years? If we were aware of it and ignore okay. it. I'm okay. Not sure. I, well, I mean, maybe that would end up in land court or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, All right. Uh, I mean, if it was obviously on Route 6A and we ignore it, um, it's kind of where saying which, that it's which, okay which probably wouldn't happen obviously but i was just curious well there's a lot of things we ignore actually <laughs> that are not mentioned so but not this this it wasn't ignored and um they're ignoring us which is okay is, the, is, uh, there's one thing that came up last meeting um was for number 500 route 6a that was withdrawn, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, it was. They decided not to knock down the bond until yeah. they have somebody look at right. it. And do we do we have that in writing? The withdrawn. I have them do a withdrawal form when they do that. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah, if they can, if they can do the magic that they did with the uh, outdoor dining building um, with that barn, that would be great. Yeah. You can encourage it's a nice that. barn. It's a nice barn. It is. Good. OK, anything else, guys? Well, so, oh, so what was what's the decision here on the um, fence? We're going we're, we're going to look at it and talk about it on June 14th. Is that the plan? Or? And we're going to review yeah. the previous correspondence. Right. On the fourteenth, and I, I just like to reiterate, there are two fences at issue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Is the black one metal or plastic? It's metal. 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 Okay. And we and we approved it, uh, Paula, but we approved it with the stipulation that it be set at least fifteen feet back from vest from the edge of Vesper, right. and that it be screened by evergreens. And right. what they did was they put it nine feet back from uh, Vesper, which is a big disparity. But this for some strange reason, they've got the evergreens on the inside of the fence. Yeah, right. And the deciduous plantings are on the outside, which should yeah. be exactly the reverse of what it should be. Uh, so I, it wouldn't be a huge deal to, I mean, it's obviously as, a, as everything's growing up, it's a bigger and bigger deal as time goes on with the plantings. But to, to cut and move the fence back to the uh, required 15 feet would not be an enormous or hugely expensive project, I wouldn't right. think. And they also said that the person who put up the white fence uh, did it on their own by mistake. So it would seem to me they're the ones responsible for moving it. You know, they should have the fence people do it. Well, I if think that... they said that they agreed to it. I, uh, they were. Oh, I thought they said it was done and they found out it was the wrong thing. It, the whole thing was very confusing. Yes, it was. Yeah. So um, I don't think anything we've done has been confusing. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll move to adjourn.
I'll Next. second. All those in favor of adjoining, Rosemary Nichols. Aye. Paula Morrison. Aye. John Stewart. Aye. Bob Wilkins. Aye. Grace Rogers. <laughs> Not a voting member, but I. <laughs> you too, Kay, can watch. Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Grace. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.